Hello and a warm welcome to St. Stephen Walbrook and uh, to this week's Choral Classics, the first stage of our celebration of uh, Pentecost today. The Choral Scholars are directed by Andrew and accompanied by Phoebe. The theme today is the Spirit of the Lord, the title of our opening music by Sir Edward Elgar, which forms the prologue to his oratorio, The Apostles, first performed in 1903 with words from the 61st chapter of the book of Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, words uh, subsequently quoted by Jesus at the start of his uh, ministry in the synagogue in Nazareth. We now hear Veni Creator Spiritus by the Spanish Renaissance maestro Thomas Luis de Victoria. The words Come, create a spirit, were written by the ninth century German monk and archbishop Rabanus Morus. Versions of the hymn, with its plea for divine inspiration, are used at ordinations, the gathering of the cardinals in the Sistine Chapel to vote for a new pope, and also at coronations. Victoria's arrangement was published in 1581 within a collection of 36 hymns and psalms covering the whole liturgical year. Veni Creator Spiritus.
in his poem at Pentecost, the poet William Blake places the emphasis on us to remove barriers that may prevent the fire of the spirit taking hold within us and firing our actions. We must catch the fire of the spirit to live each day, in the words of T.S. Eliot in his poem, East Coker. Pentecost by William Blake. Unless the eye catch fire, the God will not be seen. Unless the ear catch fire, the God will not be heard. Unless the tongue catch fire, the God will not be named. Unless the heart catch fire, the God will not be loved. Unless the mind catch fire, the God will not be known. The choir now perform If Ye Love Me by the English Tudor composer Thomas Tallis with words from today's gospel from chapter 14 of John's gospel when Jesus in the upper room on the night before his crucifixion promised to send the Holy Spirit or comforter to inspire and guide his disciples. If ye love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. The English poet and Jesuit priest Gerard Manley Hopkins, who lived in the second half of the 19th century, declares that the world is filled to the brim with God's glory and splendor. God's glory manifests itself in two ways. At times, it flames out with sudden brilliance as when silver foil is shaken and it gives out glints of light. At other times, this glory becomes apparent over a period of time as when the oil crushed from olives slowly oozes out and gathers into a thick pool. The world is charged with the grandeur of God. It will flame out like shining from shook foil. It gathers to a greatness like the ooze of oil crushed. Why do men then now not wreck his rod? Generations have trod, have trod, have trod, and all is seared with trade, bleared, smeared with toil, and wears man's smudge and shares man's smell. The soil is bare now, nor can foot feel being shod. And for all this, nature is never spent, 
There lives the dearest freshness deep down things. And though the last lights of the black west went, oh, morning at the brown brink eastward springs because the Holy Ghost over the bent world broods with warm breast and with, ah, bright wings. Well, thanks indeed uh, to all of you for joining us uh, for Choral Classics uh, today. Uh, Please stay for our Choral Eucharist, if you're able, at uh, 12.45 with Mozart's fabulous uh, Coronation Mass. And uh, do join us next week at uh, 12.15 for Choral Classics. Any donations uh, to the work of the church are always much appreciated. God bless you all. We now end with Bob Chilcott's rousing arrangement of the popular spiritual Every Time I Feel the Spirit, which according to one publisher is packed with groove and energy.